Some people know this, some people don't. Uh, right now, I consider myself a uh, agnostic atheist, which means that I don't make any positive assertion that there is no God um, because the premise of God is unfalsifiable. So I would never say that there is no God. Instead, I simply say there is not enough evidence for me to believe that there is a God. But before this, before a couple years ago, I was a huge Christian. I was raised in a Christian household. Uh, I went to church every Sunday, youth group. I was homeschooled. I would go to co-op, which was also a Christian thing. Um, even the science class that I was taught at co-op was creationism, Christian stuff. So pretty much my entire life was surrounded by Christianity. Uh, I was taught from a pretty early age that uh, you know, evolution was bullshit, and it was mainly just theories, or they thought we came from monkeys. A very lack of of understanding when it came to the the complex uh, premise of evolution. <clears throat> and the first real time that I remember becoming a Christian, if that's what you want to call it, would be uh, I, I would have had to been younger than eight. I would have been probably five or six maybe. Um, and either way, I was supposed to have like a prayer time every day, like my own little private time where I would go and I was supposed to pray or read the Bible or do something like that. Um, and I remember I used to go under my kitchen table <laughs> where I'd have my prayer time. And I remember being under the table and praying that Jesus would come into my heart or something kind of cliche, right? Um, but I still remember that because I think that that was the first time that I really prayed that and, and meant it um, because I've never forgotten that specific time. <clears throat> and so for a good chunk of my life, it was just kind of a given, you know, God, Jesus, church. That was just what it was. People are asking which denomination I went to. I was considered non-denominational, so it was still pretty modern. The church we'd go to, you know, drums, guitar, the words up on the screen. It wasn't anything like crazy or anything, um, but it also did have some elements of of <laughs> really heavy-duty Christian kind of stuff. We had a uh, um, we'd have people speaking in tongues. We would have people going up front and like waving these flags around. Uh, I remember there was this one time where the um, pastor, his wife, she had breast cancer. She died. It's a pretty sad story, but she had breast cancer. I remember we were all praying for her at the front of the church. And then she like fell backwards. She like fainted. All of these things seemed like signs from God or that God was here, you know, the presence of God. There would definitely be times also where I would be um, worshiping or singing the song or whatever. And I also would believe that I was feeling the Holy Spirit, and I was feeling God, God's presence. Um, so a lot of that wasn't entirely bad. That was a pretty decent experience for me, to be honest. Um, and it's also how I met, like, one of my best friends, still one of my best friends to this day. Um, you know, we're in pretty different places in life now, but, I mean, just the other day, we were we were hanging out at, at my, uh, my parents' house, catching up. So I have some really good memories from that environment, for sure. <clears throat> A lot of the memories that I have that are, are bad um, are more things that I look back at now and I think, how? Why? Why did I think that? Or, or why did I believe that? Or how was that okay to even tell me at that age? Um, a great example of this was I was taught, excuse me, I was taught the concept of hell far too early, far too young. In fact, I remember specifically asking my dad if this little boy down the street would go to hell if he died. And I was, I had to have been eight or younger because I remember I had my eight year old birthday in the house we moved to and we were still in the old house. So I had to have been younger than eight years old when I was asking my parents if other kids who were my age would go to hell if they died. And, you know, I look back at stuff like that now at the time, I didn't really think anything of it, but now I look back and I think, damn, that is, that's a fucked up thing to have on your mind when you're a six or seven year old little kid. That's completely screwed up. That's really like sad, you know? Um, 
But there was a lot of that in, in the early stages of my life. Like I said, I was born right into Christianity. Um, <clears throat> and then it wasn't until much later on when things started to really, uh, I guess, heat up for me in a way. Um, of course, we moved out of that house. And then I had my eight-year-old birthday in the new house. And then when I was turning 13, my dad did like a ceremony. And the thing is, is that my parents still to this day, like I have immense respect for them. And I think they were really good parents. I disagree with the religion aspect, but they also would do things that I look back and I'm like, that is fucking cool. That's like an example of how I want to be a dad to my kids. Um, <clears throat> but when I turned 13, we had like this ceremony um, and there were a bunch of different men that came from the church and we, I would basically meet with each one of them throughout the day. I think they were like at different parts of the mall or something. And, um, they would each give me like advice, words of advice. And the, all the advice was heavily based in, in Christianity. It was very, a religious based thing. <clears throat> um, but it was also after I turned 13, when things really started to unironically go to hell. <laughs> I don't remember exactly where I was or how this happened, but I know that I was actually, wait, no, let me rephrase that. I remember I was in the living room one day and my mom was at the computer and she was on Facebook and she clicked a video that was posted by one of the pastor's daughters at the time. And this video was called A Letter from Hell. And so I was curious. I wanted to watch it also. So I did. I remember standing behind my mom watching it. She knew I was there. She hadn't seen it before. And I've looked back at that video now, and it's quite corny. In fact, I'd be happy to show it to you guys on stream sometime. It's very corny, um, but I was young, and I also believed that hell was a real place. And it was terrifying to me, that video. Like, that sent me into a type of fear and paranoia that I had never experienced before. Um, right after that video ended, which included a friend who died in a car crash and then had written a letter from, uh, hell to his friend who was a Christian saying, why did you never tell me? Like the dark angels are coming. They're throwing me into the pit. Uh, this feels so real. I thought it would feel like a dream, but this is, this is like real life. I, it feels even more real than my previous life. A lot of shit that like kind of fucked with me, especially as a young kid and, after that video ended, holy shit, I had like gr dehabilitating anxiety, essentially, <clears throat> mainly because, you know, I, I had OCD and I didn't know that I had OCD. All I know is that I watched that video and it was scary as shit to me. And then I started thinking in classic OCD fashion, what if thoughts? So I thought, what if I go to hell? And that thought was enough to send me into such a level of anxiety that I had hardly ever felt it before. And then moving forward from that time, this is when I just started to get worse and worse. I was so terrified of going to hell. I remember there were times at night where I, I could barely sleep. And if I did... I would just be happy to fall asleep because it would offer me some kind of relief from the crippling anxiety that I was experiencing pretty much 24-7. And so that kind of fear really fucked with me for, for a while. Um, eventually, I talked to my parents about it, and they tried to help me through it a little bit with more religion, unfortunately. Um and so I think that right alone, like that, that was really the catalyst, the beginning stage of what if I go to hell or what if I'm not a real Christian? And then it would start falling into, I say I'm a Christian and I, I want to believe in God, but for some reason I just didn't have that like oomph feeling inside. I don't know how else to explain it, but I would just not feel like I was saying the truth. 
And I remember I was listening to a Christian song much, much many years later where it said, I want to feel it when I mean it and when I say it. And that was so much how I was feeling pretty much from that time on. There would be ups and downs, times where I was like really confident that I am in fact a Christian, times where I would be obsessively reading the Bible, times where I even wanted to listen to sermons while I was sleeping. Um, but it continuously would fall back onto this issue of what if I'm not a real Christian? What if I go to hell? Or why do I just not feel like a Christian? Why is it that when I say this and I do mean it, I don't feel it? Something was missing there. And looking back, I don't exactly know what was missing, but I think it was probably because of the way that my mind works. I wanted evidence. I wanted something more than this faith that I was supposed to just have. And so after I kind of got through the the hell uh, anxiety problem, from there that point on, it was just more and more religiously motivated anxiety. So next, I remember I was, uh, I forget where I even was. I was at home, obviously, but another thought entered my mind is, what if all of this is just a lie? What if everything they're teaching me at church is complete bullshit? Of course, I wouldn't say bullshit back then. Is complete crud. And the problem with Christianity also is that more times than not, I feel like this idea of doubting or asking questions is looked down upon. And it's met with such guilt when you do have those those uh, um, um, doubts. And so what happened was as soon as I had that thought, it was the same thing all over again. Keep in mind, this was a while after the whole hell ordeal, but same thing over again crippling anxiety. I remember I had to step out of the the um, room that I was in and I went to the bathroom and I just like sat there and I was like sobbing because I didn't know how to like control the fact that I was having like another epidemic of dehabilitating anxiety. Just what if this is all fake? What if this isn't real? What if What if they're all wrong? And I look back now and those were valid questions to be asked. Those were valid questions to have. In fact, those are the kind of questions you should be asking. And I remember that day uh, I went somewhere with actually my best friend and his mom at the time because I was still obviously like 13, right? And um, we went to – actually, we went to the church and we were packing mason jars. It was something to do with a, a missionary or e uh, evangelizing thing. And I remember just being there feeling like so numb because I just felt so fucking scared. And I remember that just anxiety being so bad. I remember like packing the mason jars and like doing everything I could to like hold back like tears because I was just, I, in my head, it was just a mess. It was like a nightmare. <clears throat> and so eventually, you know, I mustered up the strength to talk to somebody about this. Um, and this is why I say like my parents were not, they're not bad people, right? They, they didn't call me a doubter or try to make me feel bad. Actually, my dad gave me a book to read that was called Answers to Tough Questions Skeptics Have About the Bible. And this was a book, I forget who it was written by, I think it was Josh something. And it was supposed to give answers to, well, the title says it, to tough questions, right? And so I read that book and for a while that did help. For a while that did help me feel better, but then it would be the same kind of thing all over again. I would start to have the doubts, and then I would have to read parts of the book again. I would have to read the same part of the book again. And I look back now and I realize that's clearly OCD. Um, you know, the, the anxiety, the reassurance, the compulsion, all of that kind of shit is pretty much textbook OCD stuff. Um, and I don't think that religion gave me OCD or anything like that, but I do think that religion absolutely exacerbated my OCD. And my OCD clung to religious belief and religious thought, and it really just worked against me. And um, that's kind of how it was for a while then. Again, I was had a question, what if God isn't real? What if God isn't real? What if I'm not really a Christian? 
and then I'd read the same part of the book again, or I'd read the book again, or parts of it, or whatever. Um, and then I'd read the Bible over again. And this was kind of my struggle from that point on, ongoing. So I would have been around the age of 13 then, and 14, 15, 16, 17, basically throughout my teenage years, I was still surrounded by Christian Christian environment or whatever. I mean, I'd go to, like I said, youth group, or there was the Awana stuff that they had like an older version where I went when I was a teenager. And every time it was kind of the same problem where here I have people surrounding me who all say that they're Christians and they all seem really confident in that belief. But for some fucking reason, I didn't. So anyway, I was always surrounded by other people who were Christians and they seemed very confident in that. I always felt the same exact thing. Why do I not feel like a Christian? Why is it that when I say I'm a Christian, I don't feel like it? Why do I, when I mean it, I don't internally feel like I mean it. And this was just an ongoing struggle for me moving forward. Years and years of dealing with this, of trying to have that reassuring, well-being feeling sort of associated with the fact that I was a Christian and I believed in God and I believed in Jesus and I'm his, he is mine, you know, all the Christian shit. Actually, no, I do remember. I was at church in um, uh, Mount Airy and I remember the pastor was talking about believing in Jesus and, and being a Christian. And he said, if I ask you if you're a Christian and you don't know, then you do know. And the answer is no. It was something like that. That's not the exact quote. That's not verbatim. But it was something very similar to that. And that, again, sent me on a anxious fucking spiral. Now, all of a sudden, I'm thinking, holy shit. Not only am I having this constant trouble of, of not feeling sure of my faith for some reason, now I have the pastor who's telling me that that is an indication that I'm actually not a Christian. I, I was terrified, really. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know why I kept feeling this way. And so it just was an ongoing cycle. It just didn't let up. It was an ongoing cycle of I want, I want to believe that I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I want to feel like I'm a Christian. When I say that, I want to feel like happy when I say that. I want to feel like this legitimate internal agreement. I don't even know how to explain it, but that is what I wanted. And every now and then it would happen and I'd feel really good. And then, you know, I'd wake up the next morning and it'd kind of be gone. I'd be like, wait, no, I'm, but I'm a Christian. I want to, I need to pray about this or I need, to, I just was in this ongoing cycle. <clears throat> I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I'm missing because I know where I'm going with this in a minute, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else that happened with the, the religion stuff. Yes. On top of that, I would also have issues like, and this is something that uh, Matt Dillahunty pointed out. I really like Matt Dillahunty. I highly recommend you guys check him out. But he talks about how religion takes things that are normal human experiences and human emotions and then labels them a sin, putting you in this endless guilt cycle. So liking girls, for example, I remember the first time I flirted with the girl I liked on like Google chat or whatever the fuck. And a little time went by and then I started to feel guilty, really guilty, really like I'd done something severely wrong. And I would have to tell my parents or I'd have to confess. I'd always have this sort of like what I thought was a conscience, like just gnawing at me nonstop. I had an issue too where a couple of years previously, I had sent some pictures of myself holding a basketball. This was nothing like a nude photo, okay? This was me leaning against the wall, holding a basketball like this, thinking I looked fucking cool. And then I sent it to this girl who at the time I kind of liked her, you know, and she responded that I looked hot or something. And then I would remember that later on and I'd feel this vicious feeling of guilt. And that's just what religion did to me. Like, I, I don't think that it was fully 
religion's fault because I have OCD. I am diagnosed with OCD. And I also have had OCD problems with other issues completely uh, devoid of religion. At this point, I had gone through various different ups and downs with varying different degrees of, of significant amounts of anxiety or depression or just there are times that I just want to be isolated in my room, completely left alone. And not all of that was because of religion, mind you, but I was just in a bad place mentally for most of my teen years. Um, and then I remember I was going to church with my family and we were going to a different church at, uh, at, by this time. And I don't remember exactly what I was, what I was thinking, but at this point, thankfully, I had moved away from that guilt that would that would grip me <laughs> uh, when I would have doubts or questions or feel skeptical. I had moved away from that, thankfully, and now I was able to be skeptical without feeling super guilty, like I'm going to unironically start breaking down in tears or feel like, you know, God hates me or whatever the fuck. And that's when it all began going downhill because once I started being more skeptical, I don't remember like a specific thing that happened that I was like, that is specifically bullshit. But I do remember being at church thinking like something about this doesn't like, doesn't add up. This just doesn't really make sense to me. This doesn't work. I don't know why. It's just not clicking. And I was finally in a place where I wasn't afraid to just confront that fact. To just confront the fact that I had questions and I was skeptical. And for so long, I would feel guilty or crippling anxiety to even, even for those kind of thoughts to even cross my mind. Nevertheless, actually, like, entertained them. And that's when it started, really. From there, I would start asking more and more questions. Um, the last time that I thought there was some kind of a convincing element to religion was actually at the first church. <laughs> or at that church I just mentioned, excuse me. And um, they had, like, some prayer healer guy come in who was, like, apparently healing people. And then I remember him helping somebody who said, like, they couldn't walk or they always walked with a limp or something. And then it seemed like a miracle. All of a sudden, oh, my God, they were they were actually walking. And then I remember even being in, like, the parking lot and looking and seeing them. And it, like, it kind of looked like they were limping again. But that did still impress me that time. <clears throat> but after that. I just started to be, become more and more skeptical and have more and more doubts and more and more questions. And um, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but then I would go on to watching YouTube videos. I was watching The Amazing Atheist at the time, actually, and um, I didn't agree with his take on religion because although I had questions and I wasn't afraid to confront those, I still considered myself a Christian. I still would have told you that I am a Christian, um, but I, I wasn't afraid to, to question as much anymore. And I would actually watch The Amazing Atheist because he would do, like, anti-feminist videos that I found to be really funny. And then every now and again, I would see his anti-religion videos. And I would, I would check him out, you know? And, and there were definitely things that he said that I started to really think, like, damn, this is a good point. I remember the first real solid argument I heard was how God is unfalsifiable. And he compared it to somebody saying... There is a purple elephant outside of my backyard. And then when the person looks and it's not there, you say, no, it's a purple element that's only or a purple elephant that's only there when I'm there and only I can see it. So there's no way of actually proving that false. There's no way to do that. And the parallel between that and God and how it's just an unfalsifiable assertion that clicked with me. That made me really think. That put me in a place where now I was not only in a place where I was willing to question things, but I was also in a place where I started to realize that some of the, the, um, some of the, um, arguments against religion were holding up. <clears throat> and then I don't really remember the all the ups and downs from that time but I do remember that by 2017 
some of you are still familiar with that video where I talked about walking away from religion and where I said I'm, I'm not really considering myself a Christian anymore. Um, and that was like a big leap for me also because I still lived at home and my parents were still Christian. And for me to be making a video like that was not at all what they would have expected from me, especially since they raised me Christian. And that was really, that was it by that time. After I posted that video, um, from there I, I kind of became, I sort of would go back and forth between being agnostic and being atheist and, and sort of just trying to figure things out for myself. And that leads me to now, where I am right now, which is I would, I, I did research and I would listen to other people debate and I would listen to other arguments and I mean, I would still go to church with my, my family sometimes. And that's what it left. That's leaves me where I am now. Now I'm an agnostic atheist. Um, <clears throat> and walking away from that, being, letting go of that, that terrified feeling of, of questioning and, and, oh my God, I can't be, I can't be doubting this. How dare, how dare me? <laughs> you know, I, I'm so guilty for this. Once I walked away from that, it was immensely beneficial because now where I am now, it's not carrying this fear anymore and this baggage and this fear of hell. In fact, now I see it as the complete opposite. Now I see it as I'm glad that I no longer believe in a God that claims to love me and claims to be just, but is willing to send me to hell for all of eternity simply because I don't believe. Justice is defined as a punishment that fits the crime. Sending somebody to hell because they don't believe is not a punishment that fits the crime. When the rapist gets saved right before entering death row, then that rapist would go to heaven because they believed. That is not just. That is the opposite of just. Furthermore, even if being sent somewhere bad was justified, I think that eternal suffering for finite sins is also unjust. And then that, on top of the countless Bible stories about slavery, where God is okaying slavery and saying it's actually okay, or where I'm dealing with, uh, you know, the, the story of Jesus even. Now, looking back, it's like God made the rules. Why couldn't he have just changed things. He's God. Why did God need to sacrifice himself to himself to save us from himself? This doesn't fucking make sense. And that was just my, my long sort of experience and struggle with religion and eventually leading to where I am now, being an agnostic atheist. Of course, there are a lot of other arguments against God as well especially against the Christian God. I feel as though the Christian view of God is almost one of the most disturbing, actually, when you really read past the, oh, this is, the, the church told me to think this, you know, oh, the church said this, blah, blah, blah. Once you look past that and realize what the Bible is saying here in regards to slavery or how God treated Abraham or commanding his people to murder infants, that's not, a God that I would want to follow. So people will ask me, well, what if eventually there is enough evidence to convince you that the Christian God is real? Then I would believe that there is a God, but I would not follow that God. I would not bow my knee to a God that is willing to send people to eternal suffering, that is willing to endorse slavery, and that is willing to continuously hide his presence from his people. I look back now also, my experiences in church, times where I thought that I was really feeling the Holy Spirit, I can have those exact same feelings and experiences now, even more so with secular music, or with drugs, or with both. There is not this Holy Spirit moving through. What it is is that you are surrounded by people who are kind of feeling the same thing, getting caught up in the music, and when you start to feel that sort of euphoric or, or elated feeling, 
they are around you and they say, that's the Holy Spirit. So to me, that was the Holy Spirit. That's what I knew to be the Holy Spirit. And now I look back and I realize there were so many elements of Christianity that could have been achieved without God, without religion in general. And yeah, I know it's kind of long-winded. I always get long-winded when I'm talking about my own life or my own little personal experiences, my personal anecdotes, but there were just just so many problems now that I look back at and I I I don't fault my parents. I don't think my parents lied to me. I think my parents were telling me what they sincerely believed. Um, they still do sincerely believe these things, and I respect them, and they respect me. I'm an adult, and we look past that uh, because family comes first, basically. And I also have immense amount of respect, too, for my dad because he has talked to me not even that long ago and said, like, I messed up. I should not have talked to you about hell when you were um, when you were so young. I shouldn't have done that. And I messed up. I'm sorry that that messed you up. I really am. And like that meant a lot to me too. Cause I'm like, damn, my, my dad does recognize that like this probably wasn't the best approach on things, but also now as a parent myself, I am a little bit more sympathetic because I mean, I'm trying to do the best thing I can for my child. And I know at the time they were just trying to do what was best for me. When does the debate start? It starts at 2.30. Sorry, it was it, it got rescheduled. We needed a little bit more, t or Young Don needed a little bit more time. No big deal, though. <clears throat> and yeah, that's really my my sort of life story. The the circumstances that kind of put me in the place where I was. Of course, that's not my argument for leaving Christianity. Not because it made me feel bad, or not because it gave me anxiety. There are far better arguments against the existence of God, such as divine hiddenness. I find that one to be the, the strongest argument, or at least one of them, which is if God exists and God wants us to know him, why does he not reveal himself to us? Why? Why does God make it so that virtually everything that happens that's been attributed to God has a natural explanation? Why? Either God doesn't want me to know him or God doesn't want to be known. And I've thought about that too. Maybe it's possible that there does exist a God who genuinely doesn't want to be known. And when you die, you'll meet that God. And that God will say, I wanted to, I wanted to give this, this idea of does God exist? Does a God not exist to benefit humanity. I want humans to, to, um, you know, deep dive into the philosophical rigor that it requires to contemplate these, these complex matters. Maybe God is solely an idea that exists purely to test our own abilities, our own knowledge. I could conceive of that, but if that God existed, that God would not be able to then send people to hell for not believing and if he did, then God would be unjust. And therefore, would he really be God? What if God uh, revealed himself? We'd have no free will. Satan saw God and rebelled. Also, is there going to be sin in heaven? If the answer is no, then how do we have free will in heaven? Do we not have free will in heaven? Or is God able to actually make it so that we don't sin? Christianity remade the world via education, medicine, social economic reforms, such as the ab abolition of slavery. First of all, Christianity was also used to justify slavery. So I'm not sure why you would give it credit to for abolishing slavery and not for propping up slavery. That's a little weird. Second of all, I don't care. Christianity did absolutely play a role in education, medicine, and social and economic reforms. But you know what? You can do good believing a lie. You can do good holding an unjustified belief. That is possible. And if you, for example, believe that Martians created all of us with intrinsic value, well, I might go out and start a school or a hospital or create medicine to benefit people because humans have intrinsic value, right? That's not true, but it can still motivate me. to. If anybody says there is a scientist who believes this thing, therefore, 
then they're being dumb. Just the same, I would never say, hey, look, um, this scientist believes in evolution. What? No. You present the evidence for the claim, not who believes it, why you should believe it also. Evolution, for example, growing up I was taught so much that it was just bullshit or that it wasn't actually, it was just a theory kind of shit, right? Now I realize, first of all, that theory in scientific context is actually quite a, a strong belief to hold. And then the other thing is we've now discovered chromosome two. Humans hold in their bodies right now a thing called chromosome two, and it is a fusion of two different chromosomes. And we can find the full version of that chromosome in apes, in what we believe to be our earlier primates. So they have the full chromosome, and yet humans have that chromosome also, but it's fused with the human chromosome. That is a most irrefutable evidence of evolution. There was just so much, you know, once I, once I kind of broke out of that Christian bubble and stopped being so afraid to ask questions, I quickly realized that there were not good reasons to believe this thing. So yeah, this was the video that scared me pretty bad as a kid. I was sheltered. I was, uh, I believed in hell and I hadn't seen anything scary. This video terrified me, gave me a bunch of anxiety about hell and, uh, even in some ways or another contributed to me eventually leaving Christianity entirely, not because I thought the video was scary, but rather because this video caused me to have a lot of fear and anxiety about issues like hell, which led me down a path of, of questioning and skepticism and discovery and yeah, now led to where I am now, being a big brain, beautiful Reddit atheist. So, all right guys, let's, let's sit back and relax and enjoy a letter from hell. What if? What if you had a friend who died? Okay, I might have to pause this a couple times just to point out the uh, the Windows Movie Maker text is really selling it to me right here. Amazing already. Without knowing Jesus as their personal savior, what if he or she went to hell? What if one day you received a letter in the mail from beyond? A letter from hell. A letter from your friend in the flames of eternal torment. The following is a dramatic presentation. It was written by a fictitious high school student named Josh to a friend named Zach. Although Zach had every opportunity to tell Josh about Jesus, he didn't. They were best friends. They played soccer together, they went to classes together, they partied together, they shared their lives with each other. But there was one thing Zach held back from Josh his personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Based Josh for not shoving his religious beliefs down other people's throat. Hell yeah. Also, somebody asked how much dono for you to put on the fedora. Uh, 20 bucks, 10 bucks, you know, around there somewhere. The rest of the story is simple and sad. A few too many beers, a tragic drive home, a crash, a death, a funeral. Yes, I was 12 or 13 when I first saw this, and it terrified me. In its entirety. And no, the editing was not what scared me, okay? A letter from hell. Dear Zach, I died today. It's a lot different than I expected. You see, I always thought dying would bring me into a world... It's foggy and hazy. But this place is crystal clear. It's even more real than my life on Earth. I can think. I can talk. I can even feel. Right after the wreck, I could feel my spirit leaving my body. It was the weirdest thing, Zach. I thought I heard you screaming out to me, man. I must have been just imagining things. At first, I was just standing in line, getting registered, I guess. Getting registered. They asked me for my name and began to look in this thing they called the Book of Life. I guess they couldn't find it, though, because this huge angel standing next to me grabbed me by the arm and started dragging me away. I was terrified. 
I had no idea what was going on. I asked the angel where he was taking me, but he didn't answer. So I asked him again. Finally, he told me that only those whose names were written in the book of life could enter into heaven. And the rest would be condemned to hell forever. Man, I was scared. The angel threw me into some kind of holding cell where I've been sitting and thinking for a long, long time. Hey, somebody donated for the Fedora Fund. Thank you, Chen Felix, for the $15. Fedora money, sorry, it's only $15. I'm Canadian. Our money is made from syrup. Understandable. I will now get the Fedora and finish this video with my based Fedora on. Do you want to know what I've been thinking about? I've been thinking about you. There we go. Zach, you're a Christian. You told me so yourself. I mean, we talked about it three different times today. Kelly brought it up, and you laughed it off. Coach Adams brought it up, and you changed the subject. I mean, it came up right before the wreck. Well, the question I can't get out of my mind is this, Zach. Why haven't you ever told me about how to become a Christian? I mean, you say you're my friend. But if you really were, you would have told me about this Jesus and told me how to escape this terrible place that I'm headed for. I can feel my heart pounding in my chest. The angels who have been chosen to cast me into hell are coming down the hallway. I can hear their footsteps. I've heard of this hell, Zach. They call it the lake of fire. I can't stand it, Zach. I'm terrified. <laughs> No, the angels are at the door. Oh, no. No! They're coming in, and they're pointing at me. They're grabbing me and carrying me out of the room. I can already smell the burning sulfur and brimstone. I can see the edge of the cliff where hell burns. This is it. I am without hope. We're coming closer, closer, closer. My heart is bursting with fear. They're holding me over the flames. I'm down forever. This is it. They have thrown me in. Fire. Pain. Hell. Why, that? Why didn't you ever tell me about Jesus? Jesus. <laughs> and then it was all light. <laughs> Signed. 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 Your friend. Josh. Your friend. Yes. Well done. Wish you were here. <laughs> Wish you were here. Wish you were here. This is the end of it. Wish you were here. I guess that's the end. Wait, is that the end of it? What? What else is there? Oh, yeah, so I guess that's the end of it. So this was uh, the video that was supposed to inspire people to get out there and share the gospel because you don't want to get a message from uh, from from your little buddy in hell because you were too scared to share the gospel, to spread the name of Jesus to them. But yeah, this... Uh, <laughs> uh, man, what a bitch. He wanted his friend to go to hell with him. This video gave me chills, and then it makes me want to talk about Jesus in school. Oof. This really shook me to the core. <laughs> yep, but this was a <laughs> good old classic. Originally uploaded on GodTube.com. I don't know if any of you guys were familiar with that website. Um, but yeah, is this what they showed at church? No, no, no. What this was is this was posted on Facebook. And so my mom started watching it and, uh, I watched it with her over her shoulder, uh, cause we both hadn't seen it. And then this fucking terrified the shit out of me. And then from there, <laughs> what happened was, uh, I started having like a ton of anxiety about hell and that lasted like weeks to months on end where I was just like having an anxiety attack about hell because I was really scared that I was going to go to hell for some reason, even though I was a Christian, which then caused me to have a bunch of doubts. Like, what if I'm not really a Christian? Um, and like I said, it eventually led me down a path of doubt, essentially. But yeah, 
it was really cringy looking back at it now. Just like the little stock images, the Windows Movie Maker fucking fonts. It's very cringy. But, you know, I, I think that it's, uh, I think it's pretty obvious as to why this would scare a 13-year-old sheltered Christian child. Uh, especially if you were under the impression that this was, in fact, a real place and, and real possibility for even you to get sent there. So, uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty scary shit, that's for sure. <laughs> Your mother watched this with you? It wasn't like I was forced to watch it. My mom hadn't seen it either. She just sat down and started playing it, and then, you know, I was with her when I watched it too. It's, that's all. Why did it sound like the dude was shumming? I have no idea what that even means. I remember it being more gory with, like, agonizing screaming. Maybe. I don't know. I have, like, extreme anxiety and still do fear if there is a hell, which is dumb, but I'm mentally ill, so it's kind of justified. Um, I mean, I understand that. So sometimes, like, I miss the the certainty that came along with uh, with religion. The, the um, although they were wrong beliefs, they did provide a level of, of comfort and certainty about where you go when you die. I kind of miss that. Um, I definitely do feel guilty to a degree with the way I talk about Christianity now because my parents raised me differently, and I know that religion and Christianity is still heavily important to them, uh, so that makes me feel a little guilty even now. I'm not going to lie. Um, but lastly, I think that this is also why I've struggled with like existential um, thoughts and problems for so long because being raised in religion, it's all about death. It's all about where you go when you die. God's going to judge you when you die. You never see God now, but you're going to see God when you die. It's like living for the afterlife kind of shit. It's like this obsession with death. And it's really fucking creepy, honestly. And uh, that's why now, like, I look back and, and I'm able to look back at my past with way more clarity, of course. And uh, I can see how so much of the religious thought and religious belief didn't cause me to have OCD, but it's heavily, heavily uh, uh, exacerbated it and made it worse and worse and worse. And so, yeah, it's just, uh, it's really interesting to, uh, to look back at now. 